Hey everybody, this is Inara Griffin and I'm here with Bev Jones, who we are two parts of the New Earth Visionaries. And today we wanted to talk to you about my role specifically with Bev, because I think a lot of the clients that we have would be a bit like me. And in Roger Hamilton's profiling, which I use quite a bit to put together teams, I'm a star profile and a creator. So I've got that front end energy, big vision. I find it very easy to speak in public. I can produce content like just like that. But we stars and creators need to work in harmony with my ultimate perfection is Bev because she's a mechanic and she does all the stuff behind the scenes. And she's not completely like behind the scenes, but it's like we as a team are incredible because we both take two different positions in the way we look at things. So we wanted to talk today about funnels and to go back and forth between the different perspectives. It's likely that if you are one of our clients, it's likely you'll be another me, a version of me. And Bev, will be able to organize you into a way that you can actually get your empire built. So I'd just like to introduce Bev and just say, why don't you give us a little um, lesson on funnels from a techie, behind the scenes, mechanic point of view? Thanks, Inara. Hello, everyone. Um, yes, I was actually quite surprised when I took that test. Well, I know that I'm a behind the scene kind of person, but when I took that test and I was like, oh, it's an, I'm a mechanic, it's kind of like fit perfectly with the theme that we were building in the beginning. So I, I really, you know, I really, I really enjoy that process. But yeah, so I am a mechanic because I love really, I love anything technology wise, maybe because it's part of what I have like, you know, studied before as well. But it's, it's great because I was able to use that you know, I, I, I studied um, computer science before and then later on I studied marketing as well. So I married this too. And it turns out like, you know, funnel building is one part that I really enjoyed and I'm apparently good at. So what is funnel really? So um, in our mention about you building your empire, right? And you can't build your empire if you're doing everything, especially the part where you're not really it's not really your zone of genius, if, we, if you may. You know, um, you could spend hours and hours, you know, creating the content, but at the end of the day, you need a system, an automation and a system that will help you, that will enable you to reach a, a lot more people. Yeah. <laughs> My daughter is hey, gonna be Carla. coming out on the thing. <laughs> so basically, last, last week, when we had the meeting with one of our team members, Sally, she mentioned about having this you know if you have a yoga studio and you have a reception right the people will come in into your studio and then you'll get welcomed by your um you know by, by your team and from there they will learn your team would learn what do they need and then they walk them through the exact service or product that they need themselves and that's what funnel does for you they handhold your clients taking them to this specific, like, you know, step-by-step -step automated step-by-step -step system that will enable them, that will enable them to really give them what they need exactly at the time they need it. Hello. Yeah. And we're okay with kids and cats. <laughs> this, this crew are very okay with kids and cats. My cats walk through the screen. That was just Phoenix making appearance. So Charlotte is very welcome. And um, I would like to point out that the customer journey, which is often the thing that people don't look at, there are people who their whole world is mapping out a customer journey. So I worked with somebody last year and her expertise was all about every stage of looking at the business, every stage of the experience as an, inv as an event producer what might the customer go through? What might their expectations be? And what do you want to leave them feeling at that particular moment? So it comes from a very experiential, feely point of view, but then to put in administration and 
points of contact and where can you get help is a very technical point of view. So it's marrying these two ways of being. And so when uh, I think that was great, Sally Shakti um, is our copywriter, head of copywriting, and she was talking about this yoga center idea. So when I do an event, when Bev and I and Sally Shakti are doing an event for you, let's say the first thing that you're thinking about is how do I get all the interviews d done? How do I organize the people that I want to bring into the event? How do I, that's front end thinking. That's exactly what I do when I'm running an event. Who are the people I want to interview? What's the topic of the event? What are the themes that we want to cover? What's the outcome that we want to generate as an energy? What are some of the financial outcomes perhaps also? So outcome, 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 but front end, front end, front end. Now, in all of that, what can be so easily lost is customer experience because I can like prepare an event like that. If I'm on the ground and it was a live event, I can, I'm a public speaker, I have no problem with that. Bev is getting used to that, <laughs> aren't you? But yeah. for me, it's top zone of genius. I can welcome people, make them feel good, also speak on stage and all of that stuff. But when it comes to a digital event, the first interface that your audience will have is an interface. It's like, you know, they're, they're going to a landing page. They're not going to a person like myself. So what can we do to make them feel as good as somebody like I could make them feel as good as? And so there are things like little techniques of putting up a video of the person who is actually the one organizing the event to give that feeling, they'll do a little video presentation, short, sweet, welcoming, set the scene, bring in the, um, the, the experiential, feely, feely, feely. So that the first point of contact is not a cold landing page, which is super technical and they can't figure out where they're going in it. They land with a person. Again, this is how you can build tech, which has got a very, sustainable nice feel to it and then there are real technical details that go on so w what i've found in funnels especially with um if you imagine that would be them walking into the reception area of a yoga center and i might be the teacher actually so in front of me who is the person who's going to greet them on behalf of me when they first come through the door that experience moment can make or break a customer relation right it's like you can imagine like a horrible, unpleasant receptionist who's super bitchy and nasty and you walk in and you just say, oh, I'm never going back to that place. So let's talk about how tech can back you up with that, Bev. If I was the teacher and you're handling the tech, what would you want to see the front end of an experience for a customer? So, of course, the front end of the experience would be, like you said, the attitude of the person that is greeting them. It's the same thing with your landing page. You know, landing page can have the attitude as well. It can be welcoming because, you know, everything that they need to know is there available for them. Or it can be confusing, like it could be littered by like random buttons or like random videos or writings or anything that is just not just out of place, right? So in, when you're building a landing page, think of it as what would your customer want to know? And using this amazing technology that we have right now, you can literally take them on a, on a journey in a single landing page. And people don't look at it that way, that your landing page is a journey as well. The top, you know, the top headline, like for example, the headline that you use in your landing page, that is your initial approach. That's how you hey, good morning, like, you know, that's, that is your headline. So what, what are they looking for? So, you know, like little things like that, when we start building our landing pages, we really need to think of experience itself, not just, you know, the, the not only the colors, you know, not just the colors or like where to put this button, but what would they want to know? The first thing they land, what do they want to see? And of course, there comes the, you know, the, the design as well. How friendly, how user friendly is your landing page, right? And a perfect landing page would have all these different aspects, right? 
um, it, when we're building a landing page, we always have all the different aspects that they might need. So we have, you know, the headline where it's just, what is it that you're offering? Who are you offering it for? The sub headline to get to know more information about it. And then there is that, you know, like the welcome of you, for example, the video of you saying everything about what you're offering and why they should trust you. Because like, um, like Nara said, you know, when you walk in in a yoga center and you have this person that is, you know, not really nice, that is the impression that you are going to give them. Even if it's not you, it's not the teacher, it's your reception, for example. The reception that you're giving, you know, the, the reception is that is giving to your clients, that is the impression that they're going to get off you. So you need to be very, you know, very intentional when you create your landing page as well. What is the journey that you want to create? So, so yeah, it's like the first step, but then it doesn't end there. What happens after they sign up? What do they receive, you know, um, on the on, on the email, for example? What kind of emails do they get? At what time they should get it? So there's those many aspects that um, that we need to build in when you're building your funnel. Um, like like Nara said, you can be this person with like this massive vision, which is really great. But now where mechanics come in, where like people like me come in is that, okay, so how do we translate it into a system? Because yeah, you, you hear the word funnel a lot, right? But really what it is, is the automation and the system for your business, for your empire. And you need to really utilize that very well for your advantage, because instead of now in the digital economy space, instead of hiring many salespeople to do the selling for you, you have this system, you have this automation in place that will work for you better actually, because they work for you 24 hours, right? Even if you're asleep, it's there, it's existing. So, so yeah, you have to be very intentional when you're building your landing page, what kind of journey you want your customer to bring, even for the first, you know, the first touch point that they have with you. Yeah, I think that's um, something that people like myself who are too busy up the front end often don't notice like halfway down the journey of the customer. What can that be like? So I know that I've worked a lot in um, marketing and I will call it sales, but I don't really see it as sales anymore. I see it more like enrolling somebody mm -hmm. into the experience I want to take them on right now the salesy bit so there's two things I want to say about that one is people shy away from the word sales right they freak mm -hmm. out and they're like I hate sales I don't want anything to do with sales so I want to give you the best example of what sales is and this would be so everybody knows I'm a Prince fan right super fan super fan there he is and I used to, whenever he came into town, into London, and he was doing an after show, and you had to find out, like, where was he playing? And I was on all these networks, so sometimes it was Twitter, this and that. I would find out where he was playing, and there were very limited tickets. I would send a burst of joy to all my friends, even if they weren't into Prince, right? And I would say, oh my God, like, you know, it, the the date's been set. It's the 21st of June. I'm inviting you guys because you cannot imagine, this is not like Prince on a stadium gig in his usual way. You have no idea who's going to show up. These incredible musicians, some of them from um, like the history of jazz, black jazz players, much, much older than him. He invites those in. And the intimacy of all of this now, if I tell all my friends like that, and then I, that's it, I just go, yeah, it's great. The sales piece is missing. What's missing there is the literal invite. So I'm inviting you guys to come to Prince on the 21st of June, and I'm gonna get you a ticket, and this is how much it costs, and this is where it'll be, and you know, you're invited. So what happens is a lot of people, even in the funnel, are doing that. They're going, hey, wow, here's my thing. You know, it's amazing. Look at this. And then they don't do anything with it, right? They don't actually do the final piece of enrollment, which is the pure informational structure of how somebody will step over the line and go, okay, I'm going to buy that thing from you. What's the key piece here? 
trust, 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 trust. Now, my friends, even when they didn't know about my uh, experiences of these after shows, would come with me just because they trusted me, right? And I would get them a very good deal. I would take them to Prince. They then became consummate fans forever because they'd never see him, him playing in this kind of way. Why? Because they trusted me. Even if they were like, oh God, I can't stand his music. I'd be like, trust me, come and see this thing in a different way. And they would just come along. Think about your customer like that. How can you build trust? It's every step of the way it is taken care of. And the mechanics of a funnel are very much like that. It's somebody who thinks, we think, obviously humans make funnels, right? So it's not the other way around. It's not the machinery dictates everything. It's the other way around. When they come to a point, and this is happening to me all over the internet now, I go and look at some clothes and I don't buy them but I like them. And the next thing I know in my Instagram feed, the very same dress will pop up. That's a funnel. And that may be all it takes that I need one more viewing, one more moment with it to actually just go over the line and go, okay, I'm going to actually buy this dress in a funnel way. People like customers or like, you know, they're all different types of people need, different experiences to help them along that way. And they also, especially if it's a high ticket offer, need to know that the coaching thing that they're looking at or whatever the program is, is delivered even in the first instance. And that's how all the beginning of a funnel is, is showing and proving to your customer that you're reliable and trustworthy. Yeah. Anything yeah. to add on that, Bev? Yeah, I do agree on that. Like, you know, for example, the very simple things that when they sign up for a free thing that you're offering, right? So they put the email address because they, they want it and they trust that you're going to deliver it. And then if you don't have a right funnel build at the back end where they don't get what they've promised that they're going to get an exchange of their email address, that is already loose of trust. And uh, for example, they paid for the program that they that you're offering and then you don't have the proper structure um, automation at the back end so that they receive everything that they need that's also a loss of trust so you need to be really mindful of like the step by step that your customer go through that if they do this what's the next step like um and i gave an example of shopping for clothes right so what generally happen if people don't build a proper funnel is like they go to the website and they maybe decided okay i'm gonna get it put their put their details but then at the last minute they didn't buy and usually a lot of the system that's built that's it that's the last phase right they don't even follow up with you but if you do it properly you can have you know a reminder sent to there like hey i saw that you are interested in this product that i'm offering um is there anything else that i can do to help you did you experience as you know problem in the system perhaps you know you didn't complete the purchase so just that little you know little touch point another touch point with you maybe that would convert them and you don't want to do it manually right you can't really do sit there all day and really just see okay who are the people and then call them one by one you then have a system in place that would do that for you that will save you so much time energy because you know like 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 an said as well people don't really like selling, right? It's, it's not, for a lot of people, it's not natural for them. So why don't you outsource that part to a system? So the technology that we have right now, leverage on that and let them do the work for you. And then you can just conserve all your energy for the things that you love to do, whether it's you know serving your clients or creating more content out there that your clients would love. So, so there's just that, a lot of the um, the benefits of using the technology and the system. And as I mentioned, we are now in a digital economy. We're in digital age. If you don't have a proper system built for your business, for your empire, then you're already behind. You're already behind of a lot of people. And maybe we could talk to people about how we would go about um, looking at and designing a funnel for somebody. 
So yeah. let's say you are a coach. Let's say you're a love coach and you know that your work is great and you've done some videos before and maybe you've even done some public speaking and the time has come that you're realizing that your day job which you might have had uh, pre-covid was a day job and then you were doing a bit of this coaching on the side but you've made the decision now that you want to step fully into becoming a, a love coach and you want to get known globally so the first step would be acknowledging where you are on the journey. That's almost like acknowledging the customer journey as well, right? No customer is going to come to you if you haven't done the journey yourself. You're sort of ill prepared. What I'll say around that stage, um, Roger Hamilton talks very much about this being the infrared stage of business. And infrared is where everything is relying on you. So we're lone wolves, we're out there, we're trying to build this new thing. We may be segueing from one previous existence, like we had a job, to another one where we wanna go into a different topic and go online. And right at that point, if you are, there's nothing wrong with it being infrared, it is a stage in a build, but you will always rely on yourself always for everything. You will never think that actually, if I just get one other person to, do, to help me with something that I would expand exponentially. So the first thing I would say right there is, do you have an assistant? I ask everybody, do you have an assistant? Because that immediately tips you up to the next level of business. Mm -hmm. The funnel is like an assistant. So we would ask you, what is your vision? Like I would ask you, what is your vision? Are you global? Well, you should be basically. There's no local anymore in this new earth era. So who are your clients? So we'd look at the avatar. Who are your clients that you specifically want to reach? Where might you find them congregating on the internet? And at this point, I would then, I would always suggest events, right? Because in the way that I see business unfolding and I've tried many, many um, techniques, I'm an entrepreneur for years, I look at things as there has to be something which is a buzzy quality, right? To get attraction. And I'll show you how I've been building this with, with Bev. I build it with my placemats. So, and I build it with my clients like this. I work a lot with timing and I'm very interested in natural currents and flow of season moon cycles and sun cycles. So there is like group consciousness, if you like about there are times when things naturally work. So let's say it's January of 2022 and you are in the health area and love coaching is in that area. Well, we know that there's gonna be a bunch of coaching programs kicking off in January. So let's put January here. So what we wanna have here is an event of some kind, an event which is buzzy. There's an attraction point. And so a digital online event, which can go global, is something which we could set up for you. You could spend from now for the next month, setting that event up, knowing it's all in hand, inviting um, people that you want to interview. And then we know that the build up to the event is going to require some of that. I'm going to get Bev to talk about that. And then after a nurture sequence, but in my world, this is the buzz. There needs to be another buzz here. There needs to be another buzz here. And there needs to be oops, wrong arm. I can't do backwards here. So in the end, what I'm teaching my clients to do is to have four major points in their year, major, major points. And it doesn't have to be the January thing, but let's say if you are a love coach or it's health or it's well-being or anything like that. January obviously is a very good start. So you could actually go through the usual quarters. January, next one is gonna be March. Next one is gonna, I think January, February, March. Yeah, every three months, you're gonna have something. So let's ask Bev what you would put in place if that's the actual physical event and we would have one online and maybe we do another one that's physical. What would you set up with them to understand about how you lead the, the technology around that? 
right so yeah first of all what we're gonna do is really have that discovery call with you we're in okay so this is your goal like you know you want to launch your own coaching program so as Inari said where are you at your business right now we'll look at your audience and stuff like that and then from your event what happens next so depending on what kind of offer do you have because some people have you know low ticket offer and some people will have a high ticket offer like again like you know funnel works for you it's not just those that okay everyone works in the, with the same funnel funnel is like really very much personal but the experience that you want to give them like some people they don't want to jump on a call with a client even though they're selling a high ticket right well some people do so we build it based on the strategy that is fitting for you because i can tell you like oh let's just do an auto web you know, automated webinar for you with the automated webinar funnel after the event then we offer this through a webinar then blah 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 like you know we'll do all these steps but if that's not you if that's now how you work, if that's not where your energy is, then it's not going to work, right? Some people really want that interaction where they want to be able to talk to other people, especially if they're selling high ticket. Um, so yeah, we build the next step. After the event, what happens next? So you, we will look at the opportunity of you monetizing the event that you have just done, whether it's just you know one-off or if it's something that they can access for a longer time, and then we'll set up the technology behind it so that everyone who's attended the event and want to work with you further would have that access, would have the, you know, the, the, the website, I'm sorry, the, the membership site, if you want to call it the membership site, or the content vehicle, basically, the container for your content that you created, because not all your content deserves to be out there, because some of your content are really valuable that you need to lock it in inside this container. So that's where, you know, that's where your business becomes sustainable, right? Because um, we've seen a lot of content creators that all they do is just create so much content, they give everything for free. And that is great, because that's your generosity. But you need to be able to distinguish what of your content would you like to lock in a container and have it as a part of your offering as a coach. So we build that container for you. We build all the support that you need, you know, technology wise, so that everything, everyone and everything is accessed at a, at properly at the right time and really giving them that flawless or like oh, flowing what's let's say a flowing journey wherein nobody is confused like what's happening next like you know we'll solve we'll, we'll solve it using the technology that we have yeah and i think the the idea is when you hear the word funnel because it's such a branding term it's thrown around all the time in marketing circles you can think it's a thing that has no relation to you actually you are your funnel. You are your funnel. I love it. Because depending on what your personality is like, so if I, I have built two funnels this year with the help of Bev, and it's always about, for me, touch points with people so that they get to know me more. And so a big piece of it will always be public speaking. A big piece of it will always be a master class. So I'm always, here's a kitty cat, Charlotte. <laughs> There we go. Cats and kids. This is our business, women in business. Um, and so basically, for me, I would always want to um, deliver some kind of uh, session where people can experience me live. And so we would build something towards a live moment with me. We might have a masterclass before that, where they get a sense of what I do and some of my singing bowls because it's a bit of an entertainment factor. And then we would lead it to something else. Then there'll be email campaigns, which will go off. Then they can maybe buy a taster product of what I do, or they could go on a strategy session. For a long time, and one of my biggest selling points was positioning, oh, I can't even remember the name of it, but it's, position, it's the positioning of you and your brand strategy session and in the market and i sold more of those last summer than i've sold any other product and the thing is it was quite high ticket in terms of its own pricing because it was about 500 dollars to be able to do that but positioning yourself in the market and branding is everything if you can position yourself in 
It's actually the biggest thinking behind the brand. And so that would be a taste or touch point for me, but it was still quite a high price. It wasn't, you know, my big courses that I did. And I sold tons of those just through working up in the right way so that somebody would get to know me enough to think, actually, I want this woman to work on strategy with me, right? So you may be a little bit like me, or you may be somebody who doesn't want anything to be live. You want just to do, you know, your teaching, you want it to be automated, you want them to be evergreen so they last forever, nothing is ever changeable. Maybe you're somebody who's working, like I know my friend is working a lot with, um, with physiology. So when they actually work on a physiological graph or something, it's not like it's going to change. So they don't need to keep reintroducing it in a different way. That's a static piece that would always stay the same. And then there are other people that we know, and we were talking about this, when you offer too much, it's like, imagine a kid in a candy store, you're just like, you know, you're like this, <laughs> like, what am I gonna eat? And so really the choice always has to be at least of two things, if not one, sequentially, one after the other. Now that is not how people like my end of the spectrum work. They just, they're always ideas people and they're always pumping them out. Actually, you need to start to retain some of that information which therefore brings it more value. And then there are pieces, maybe little, you know, touch points like Facebook Lives where you're giving away freebies. And all of that is part of the funnel. And yeah, Bev, do you want to say anything else just to conclude on funnels? Yeah, no, actually, I just wanted to really emphasize on what you said there because it's very important. Like, you know, um, like you said, we sometimes come up with this vision there. We, we want to offer them so much. So I have this, 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 A, B, C, D, E, and F, right? But if you give them the option from A to F, people get confused. What do you want to do is really narrow down what is your signature oh, offer, yeah. where you can start. Yeah. Sorry, my daughter heard the alphabet so and she thought oh. I'm going to do the alphabet with her. <laughs> so like really figure out what is that main yeah. offer that you want. And then from there... From A, take them to B, and then take them to C. And later on, don't offer them everything at once because they just get confused. Honey, one second. Sorry about that. <laughs> and it devalues so, your own work. When you, we, we are working with somebody right now who's had so many offers and she's trying to move to the next level of a high ticket offer. We can't even move to a high ticket offer. We have to move to a medium offer because she's offered so much and there's so much availability of her all over the place that nobody is going to value what what it is that step and we actually can't do it with her we can't do a high ticket offer and i'm talking like going from something which is say 300 dollars to 600 right medium we're taking it to about four thousand dollars High ticket offer, I'm talking like $15,000, something like that. We can't do it from somebody who offers so much of the $300 range and everybody sees she does everything at the same range, right? Long courses, short courses, uh, interviews, activations, this and that. They're all the same price pretty much. And so how can we get her audience to be um, re taught actually and you know how we're going to do it <clears throat> we're going to have an event excuse me <clears throat> we're going to have an event to attract a new audience because we cannot work with the same audience and offer them suddenly up here it's never going to work and we can't even train some of them to go midway here so that requires entirely new strategy where you go okay we need to attract a whole new audience so she's come up with a whole new offer a whole new style of working and she's going to present it at the event stage digital online event and from there we take that new audience on the funnel journey again yeah i think you know just to really conclude for those people that are watching right now if you really have you know those sort of offer like you have a lot of offers um this is one thing that i always like I would always remember when I started learning about funnels and marketing, it's uh, what they say is that a confused mind 
a confused mind never buy. So you have to be very specific to what are you offering and really, yeah, be intentional on the journey that they're that you're going to take your clients. And if you can, you can spell it out for them the easiest way you can, that would be, that would be better for yourself and for your clients as well, less confusion. And, you know, you might be able to convert them much more easier. Yeah. So I think that's um, a great place to to bring this to a close. And what we will always say is if even if you don't have the whole picture, get in touch with us. We can talk you through how this might evolve. And even to the point where, you know, I used to be like, oh, my God, I don't want to speak to them because that means I have to buy something. Um, I want to give you a very different presentation of how we work. Firstly, we don't want to work with everybody. So there's no problem there. Like we're not people who just need to get endless bargain basement deals in at all. But the people that we work very well with are people who have a very far reaching vision. And we start just with small steps to implement just the things that we need to build the audience. And then we're really looking further. And eventually the ultimate thing would be when I'm working with my own master um, modeling system of, of strategy, because I'm a real strategist, it's what my speciality is, we would have you working on four points of every year, having some kind of action attraction event. And then that also means that you're not doing push, push, push all year either. You get a life, you get lots of downtime, reflection time, because you, your journey will change as well that you, you think you're going to do one thing, then you start with this and all of a sudden revelations come and you're going a different direction. This gives you the right pacing of being able to work even with your own journey so that you can say, I changed here, I altered here, I'm going to meander here, the funnel will meander with you and then different event maybe. And then we build it out and Bev does all the nurturing, the structuring, Sally Shakti, who is not here today, but she does all the copywriting of leading people through this journey. And then we have video editors and video people who are part of that journey as well. And it's an amazing team, right? It's an amazing team, but we had to build even in our own businesses, a team like this, who can handle all the different perspectives of building your empire. So feel free to speak to us. We're really very friendly. <laughs> and, yes, we are. <laughs> uh, yes, we are. And uh, most of us are women, actually. We still, we have a few men in our team as well. Great men. There's always a few good men, but we're kind of used to kids, cats, and, you know, like, how are you going to build this from, from your life? Not yeah. from just, you know, stepping up here, da-da. It's like, how are you going to build this? you know, in stages. So uh, I'll say goodbye until the next time. We're going to do more and more of these trainings. And I hope that helped you understand a little bit about funneling. All right. Thank, Thank you so much. much.